we're going to do another example. And we're going to create an input. We're going to use a class selector instead. And we're just going to call this text field. So we've got an input type is text, class is text field. And inside of this text field, we're going to assume that someone has entered some sort of information in here. Some info in here. We go back to our page and refresh. We have a basic input field. It just says some info in here. Now, how do we get that information? It's not the same as how we did it with main. Let's try that. Let's do txt is equal to document.query selector. What is the selector that we're looking for? Dot text field, dot being the class, just like in CSS. Cool, that gives us the entire element. Now we have the entire element to modify here. What happens if we do txt dot inner HTML is equal to test? Well, it returned test, it didn't look like it changed anything in there. Well, okay, it changed the inner HTML of input. However, input is one of those elements that doesn't have inner HTML. It's a self-closing tag. There's only one. It's not, it's not like a div or a text field or a text area rather. The input field generally just looks like this. That's your input field. So how do we view the input that we wanted to change? Like how, how do we see that on the page? The trick here is that we are no longer editing inner HTML. We're editing an attribute. We want to change the value. We want to change the value attribute. So instead we type txt and then the attribute name is equal to a new attribute value. And now we can see that the value of the text field has changed as well. Now if we wanted to get that information, create a new variable, call it input is equal to txt.value. And if I alert the input, it gives us exactly what's on the page. But what if I changed it dynamically on the page? What if I'm a user? I'm not looking at the code, right? As a user, I just want to interact with the page normally. So I'm going to say, hello, my name is Lamp. And I wanted to get this information again. Well, I know I want to alert it. And I know that I need to get this information again. So what happens if I do txt.value? We get the value of the input field. Now that's perfect, but that might be a little bit confusing. How come it worked here, but it didn't work in the previous example when we were changing the inner HTML? Well, that's not to say that it didn't actually work. Uh, it worked the way that we wanted it to. However, there's a little bit of difference because we're working with a value. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing the txt variable from up here. And we know that this is selecting this input, this whole element. Now the variable has not stored the value of this element yet. This variable is simply referring to the entire element. So anytime that the value changes, we can go ahead and get the new value because we didn't store that in a variable. Now, if we did data is equal to txt dot value, we get hello, my name is lamp. If we change uh, txt dot value is equal to something else and type data again, it's back to where it was. So it basically takes a snapshot of where the data was, what it was, uh, and stores it in a variable for you. Now I'm just going to comment this out in HTML so it doesn't show up. And I'm going to go back to main and I'm going to change some of these style attributes because in JavaScript, a very common thing that you want to do is add classes, remove styling, add styling. You know, you want to basically manipulate your CSS because CSS is extremely static you want to change that from time to time. I refresh the page, I have absolutely nothing there. I look in my elements, I know that main is there. My input is also there, but it's, it's commented out, so we're not gonna work with that. But the main, say main is equal to document dot query selector. Cool, it selected the right one. Now if I wanna change the inner HTML, perfect, now we have some text on the page. And if I want to change the style, we say main.style.border. And because this is an object oriented a dot notation kind of language, it looks for the style and then it looks for the specific CSS style. 
order is as a string, one pixel solid red, and now we have a one pixel solid red border around it. One thing you can't do though, is if you wanted to add border to just the top, you don't add dashes. Instead, you camel case it, and it would be border, and instead of the dash, you use a capital T. That's actually a bad example because we already have a border. Let's use something else. Main.style.padding top is equal to, let's make this absurd, let's say 50 pixels. Now that padding only took place on the top. And what happens in our page is where it says style, we're changing the style attribute. Now we didn't give it a style attribute in the HTML, but JavaScript is smart enough to realize that, oh, okay, this can have a style. Pretty much everything in HTML can have a style. So it goes ahead, it creates the attribute for us, and it fills it with the information that we gave it. We gave it a style of uh, one pixel solid red border with a 50 pixel padding on the top. Now, if you're unfamiliar with uh, how to edit CSS, uh, just a quick little reminder is when you're on your elements page, you can toggle these as well. And if you don't like what you're seeing, you can always edit the HTML directly. Okay, so that's query selector in a nutshell. What I want you to do is I want you to create an element on your HTML page. I'll give you the project files as well. Create an element on your HTML page and then open up your console and write a query selector. Grab that, put it in a variable like you saw with main is equal to document.querySelector. Then I want you to change the inner HTML, and then I want you to change the styling of it. And it doesn't just have to be the border or the padding. Try other CSS properties that you're aware of. It could be margin, background color. It could be the font color. And then I want you to basically do the same thing, but instead of using an ID selector or a class selector, just use an element selector. See what happens when you select the entire body and you change the background color of the body.